very much to the webinar by uh, hosted by Eden and Eden Nat, the Network of Academic of Professionals. And this uh, webinar today is about the quality and technology and even learning on micro, meso, and macro level, and who are the stakeholders, and why and how do they have an interest. So it is the first uh, webinar hosted by uh, this special interest group on technology enabled learning and quality uh, enabled on tell and quality uh, in learning. Uh, so we have um, Eleonora and we have um, uh, Sultan and Ferenc from uh, from Eden and uh, we are really waiting for some uh, more people to dropping in uh, during this uh, this hour. We will see how it goes. But very much uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, so this uh, webinar. Uh, the, the facilitators in this webinar um, is myself, and, and I am an Eden EC uh, member, and also I'm coming from the Swedish Association for Distance Education in Sweden. Um, I am also coordinating this uh, special interest group about technology-enabled learning and quality enhancement. And together with me is uh, Mark Nichols, who also is in the Eden EC from the Open University in the United Kingdom. And then we have our president from Eden, Irina Bolonge Bifjener, um, from Viotas Magnus University in Lithuania. So it will be the three of us. And we will um, take different part uh, here in this hour on the different levels of micro, meso, and macro level about TEL. Uh, so this uh, Eden Special Interest Group have been discussed for a while uh, in Eden and in, in, in Eden EC. And in June, when we had the annual conference in Sweden in Jönköping, um, we launched uh, officially uh, the Special Interest Group on uh, Tell and Quality Enhancement. And we did that uh, first with a presentation by uh, our president, Irina. Uh, at the welcoming address, and then we had each of the days we had um, uh, different um, seminars or and workshops uh, on the themes of um, the rationale and the action plan for um, for this Eden special interest group, uh, and about renewing the quality agenda, and about quality and tell at micro, meso, and macro level, and about stakeholders, and then also about innovation for quality leadership. And uh, we had a very interesting uh, discussions during all the workshops uh, during that uh, that week. And people had a lot of interest. And uh, we have also now launched um, a special page on Eden web page for the special interest group. So please, you're welcome to, um, to uh, have a look at that and to, to contribute. Uh, so far, uh, we have a group, a, a core group. Um, as I said, um, myself, I'm leading this group. And then we have Sandra Christina Softik, also from Eden EC, uh, Mark Nicholas, and Irina Volonga Vishana. I have already mentioned who will be here today. We have Antonella Poshnev. Uh, she is the chair of the Eden NAP, and she is in our group because this is a collaboration with Eden NAP. We have Antonio Texera the former president of Eden. Uh, we have uh, Ulf Ehlers from Germany, who actually will host uh, the, the next seminar, uh, webinar uh, in the beginning of December, the 7th of December. Then we have Jaki Kuomi, and we, we have Jakob Katz, and soon we will also have Fred de Vries. So we are welcoming uh, many Eden uh, members to take part and to in this uh, uh, in this uh, special interest group and to collaborate about this very, very important topic on quality and tell. Um, so first, uh, briefly, uh, the term technology enhanced learning is uh, maybe not always so um, easy to define as it has a lot of different um, uh, interpretations. And that is also both time uh, the time and context uh, dependent. 
So there is not just uh, one um, one definition, and during this webinar we will discuss uh, this a lot. Uh, however, um, the, the concept is more and more uh, used to, to be talking about enabling learning instead of enhancing learning. And this is from um, work by Kirkwood and Price uh, in a report from Commonwealth of Learning. <laughs> so what is uh, tell about? Uh, in overall, it is to uh, enhance and to enable possibilities for learning. And that is also, as I said, why the term more uh, enabling is more used than enhancing, because it's rather difficult to enhance learning in that way. But it um, also has some synonyms, as we will hear. Sometimes it's just e-learning or um, hybrid learning or um, blended learning can also be called. Or, so it's not just about the technology as, as such, but using dig digital media and, dig and uh, digital technologies. Um, so this seminar is about quality. And uh, again, uh, also the, the topic quality and the term quality is rather uh, difficult to to define and to interpret because it's time de dependent, it is context dependent, but most of all it is uh, a question of quality is in the eye of the beholder. So what's in it for me? And during this webinar we will hear a lot of different kind of perspectives about quality enabled learning. Uh, so by that I will leave the, the floor to um, Mark to continue. So please, Mark. Great, thank you. Yeah, uh, I forgot to, to mention Sorry, before you start. The Oops, sorry. I thought they were all uploaded previously. Christian, is it possible to get my slide set up, please? Lovely, thank you. This uh, webinar is recorded and you can, uh, we'll have the link afterwards and also you who participate in this webinar will get um, the, a badge afterwards. That is important. So thank you. So uh, please mark. Wonderful. Thanks, Eva. And thanks, Krista, for getting the slides up. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my pre presentation today is concerned with different levels of quality at the levels of micro, meso, and macro. And these add a very interesting dimension to how we think about, ensure, and measure quality in TEL. At the Open University, we've had several discussions in our TEL team about how to measure quality. And as you'd expect, it became a difficult thing to talk about because the term quality is a very tricky one. We all think we know what it means, but when we talk to others, it becomes clear that not everyone understands quality in quite the same way we do. To be clear, I'm not ultimately responsible for the quality systems at the Open University, but as a TEL practitioner, I have a special interest in the area as it applies to TEL. Let me just start with a quick poll. You'll see the options come up here now. So poll number one, how much do you understand about quality in TEL? And poll number two, how easy do you think it is to establish quality in TEL? I'll just open yep, one and two. Thanks, uh, Krista. So how much do you understand about quality in TEL, the first uh, one on the left? And how easy do you think it is to establish quality in TEL? That's the poll in the middle. OK, there's not too many of us in the webinar today, but uh, good to see some responses come through. Okay, you're clearly very experienced quality people. Okay, interesting to see how think how easy you think it is to establish quality and tell. Very difficult, uh, four out of five of you. Not too difficult for, for one of you. Well, we all think we know about quality, and that's actually a big problem. I'd like to start with just a few slides showing how complex any talk about quality really is. Quality is not something we will all agree on not just in terms of how we measure it, 
but also how we think about how quality should apply to our work. So to begin with, agile project methodologies interpret quality as something that emerges over time. Agile methodologies challenge what we mean by quality because what is good enough for now is thought to be sufficient. And this photo really illustrates the difference quite well. Historically, quality was something built into a product before its single, one and only market launch. The product reflected all of the quality decisions that were made as the product was reduced, because once a product was made and marketed, there was little opportunity to change it. Now, things online are very easy to update, so we can often settle for just good enough for now. We're more used to bug fixes being released after a product is in use, and this changes how we think about quality, because we can always fix what we did once we know what users think of it. We simply provide an update. Now, this is something I think we need to consider quite carefully in Tell, because the principles of agile production fit very well with how we might choose to teach students. So if we think we know about quality, well, perhaps there's a bit more to it. Consider, too, some different forms of quality. There are very different goals for Tell quality and quite different approaches to measuring it. So as far as goals are concerned, you may want to achieve some sort of certification for your institution, such as an e-excellence quality benchmark. Certification is something you can use in marketing to help reassure students and other stakeholders that the quality of your work is recognised by an independent body. You could also benchmark yourself against other institutions using agreed criteria. If you do an internet search for the terms at the top of the slide in red, you'll find two TEL quality benchmarks, and I'm most familiar with the ACODE one of those two. The benefit of benchmarking is that you can learn from other institutions about their way of ensuring quality. Benchmarking also requires you to think about your own performance and how you can improve. Accreditation might be another objective, and here the goal is to assure an agency that your TEL function complies with particular standards. These are usually national in scope, but various professional bodies also insist on specific quality standards. So there are a whole host of things we might measure in the name of quality. We might be concerned with the entirety of the technologies used for TEL, whether they're well looked after, well supported, and meet student needs. We could also measure quality based on how TEL is used across different courses. And we could consider quality in terms of tutorial sessions and teaching quality. So we could consider quality to include all or only some of these. There are also very different ways of measuring quality. Surveys and evaluations will provide good data of what people experienced or thought about things, and statistics and analytics provide different forms of data. Or you may want to participate in a benchmarking exercise, which takes a lot of effort, but gives valuable insight into the quality of what you're doing. There are also different times for measuring quality. So before something is provided to students, a systems audit might be done, so that you know students will get a quality experience before they begin to study. Two options for measuring quality after a course is either developed or studied include checklists and evaluations. So as with the previous slide, all of these approaches might be desirable. So what at first seems uh, quite simple becomes very complex. In the very good 2015 report, Quality Models and Online and Open Education Around the Globe, it's said that there's probably no topic in education which is, which is so discussed and generates as much controversy as quality, and I think from those previous slides you can see why that's the case. You can find the report by doing a web search, again using the terms in red at the top of the slide. Part of the reason for the controversy is that we all practice tell from different perspectives. Some of you may be VLE administrators, other may be course designers, some of you might be tell designers or senior managers of tell, or perhaps so you might be responsible for all aspects of quality in your university. Some of you might be in universities that teach face-to-face -face and apply TEL to support lectures. Others might be in universities such as my one, where a distance model is used. In all of these examples, our understanding of quality and what's most important will be different. What I want to do for the remainder of this presentation is focus on a way of looking at quality that will be useful to TEL staff. At least it's very helpful to me as I consider what quality might look like in our TEL practice at the Open University. You'll have heard of these levels of micro, meso and macro before, both from the Eden Telsig and the upcoming 2018 Eden Conference in Genoa. From my perspective, considering quality from the micro, meso and macro levels makes a lot of sense, and it leads to making good tell decisions right across a university. 
Micro, Meso and Macro give us another set of options for measuring quality. The Macro level is the highest possible level of detail, the Micro the smallest, and the Meso fits between the two. It's possible to measure tail quality at all three levels, and I actually think it's best to measure the quality of tail across all three. So what do these levels actually represent? I think there are two ways in which people tend to think about micro, meso and macro. In the ICDE report I mentioned earlier, the perspective taken is that on the right, that of a quality manager. On the right, you'll see that the relationships across micro, meso and macro are determined by the relative number of the personnel involved, either a single individual, a group of people across a university, or an entire nation. Clearly, there are different quality interests that each of these will have. My preferred way of thinking about micro, meso and macro is shown on the left. At the Open University, we have less individual practice and more of a team focus in how we approach TEL. Each member of the team is responsible for the elements that make up a TEL-based course or module. At the meso level, these elements combine into a course experience leading to a qualification. And all of this takes place in an overall context of practice, some determined by the university and others by our external stakeholders. As you can see from the arrows, each level influences the ones above and below it, and of course there is some crossover. For the remainder of this presentation, I'm going to describe more about quality from the perspective of the TEL practitioner, so on the left of the slide. Before I get on with that, just another quick poll, just the third question there down the bottom. Which level of TEL are you usually concerned with in your work? So three options there, across the university, at the level of courses, or designing individual activities. So if you just uh, quickly indicate there. Okay, so I can see there's some quite different levels here. We've got three of you across the university level, one at the level of courses, and one at designing individual learning activities. Okay, it's very interesting as we proceed, because I think you'll find this version of micro, meso, macro uh, will be quite useful to you all. So let's start with the overview of all of them. It helps to think of micro-level quality as being concerned with individual assets, features and benefits which are like the parts that make up the whole. The whole is the meso-level where all of the micro-elements combine into a single product. These uh, meso-products or services take place in an overall context which is the macro-level. So I'll tell you a bit more about what those mean as, as I proceed. But as an example, you might consider this presentation. The micro elements include things such as your internet connection, our use of Adobe Connect, my slides, and what I'm saying. All of these can be judged by different quality criteria. For example, what I say should be at the right pace or speed. My voice should be clear. I should use words that are easy to understand. What I say should make sense. My slides should be clear. I shouldn't use too many. Colours shouldn't be too overstated. So at the micro level, you can see that every asset or feature might have its own quality considerations. At the meso level, all of these micro features combine into this overall presentation experience. So the entire presentation experience you're having right now is at the meso level. You can see that the quality criteria applied for this presentation overall would be a bit different than for each component. So here the quality criteria might include whether I go on for too long, whether you felt the session was worthwhile, and your overall experience. The macro level is the context in which this presentation takes place, so it's a webinar for the Edentel SIG. Here the quality criteria might be considered differently. Eden want this webinar to be of benefit to its members, good for its profile, and to generate interest for later. So to finish this presentation, let me just pick up on each of these three in more detail using different examples as I continue, just to make it clear. So I've introduced the micro level as the one where individual assets, features and benefits are considered, and you'll see that I've applied two examples here. Your phone has a number of individual assets, features and benefits, including its amount of storage, uh, the number of megapixels to your camera, and the number of apps available in your app store. Each of these must be of good quality in themselves. Similarly, your car consists of a number of components that must be of high quality. In the same way, in TEL, each element of a course we produce and each online tool that we use should be recognisable as being of quality in themselves. So this includes all elements of a course, from discussion forum exercises through to assignments and video assets. 
The ICDE report, Quality Models in Online and Open Education Around the Globe, mentioned earlier, points out that most quality systems are designed for the meso and macro levels. So it would be a good idea to ask specialists at your own university to help develop micro-quality standards based on their own experience and some research into media and activity design. At the meso level, the micro-elements we've just looked at combine into a single deliverable, be it a product or service. So at the meso level, we consider entire modules, courses, or qualifications. There are many tools available for assessing quality at the course level, but you may find that the best come from instructional design sources. So if you do a web search for Open University Learning Design Iceberg, you'll find some work by OU colleagues that lends itself nicely to a set of meso-level quality criteria. It's a bringing together of a whole lot of lessons to do with uh, instructional design, which apply very well into tell practice. Finally, at the macro level, you deal with the level of practice and overall compliance. So this is the area best served by existing TEL quality models, and it's also where TEL practice meets overall institutional quality codes. From my extended examples, you'll see that phones must comply with technical standards, including battery regulations, file type standards, and network protocols. Each car needs to comply with safety standards and highway codes. In the same way, we're not usually free to practice TEL with no responsibility to the university. Some accrediting bodies, uh, for example here in England, the British Psychological Society, also set standards that we must comply with at the macro level. One of the standards set by the British Psychological Society is that there must be a minimum staff-student ratio of 1 to 20. This is part of the compliance that determines how TEL might be used. Your country's Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education will have other very wide-reaching requirements that your TEL function must comply with, and you'll also have institutional policies and strategies that will shape your practice. There are many tools available for determining TEL quality at the macro level, and I'll refer you back to the uh, ICD Quality Models Report using the terms at the top of the slide for a web search to get an overview of them. So where does this leave us? Well, a lot depends on what your role is in your university. In general, I suggest that you do these things as TEL practitioners. Firstly, take an interest across all three areas of quality because all of them are interrelated and so all are relevant to what you do. At the macro level, I suggest you learn as much as you can about your university's quality systems and obligations. Not just the TEL ones, but the overall ones. As a further step, I suggest you take a look at the ICDE report mentioned earlier and select a quality model that you might use to certify or else benchmark your TEL function. This will give you confidence about your practice and will likely lead to areas of improvement. I also suggest that you give some thought as to TEL at the meso level. I suggest that the Open University's Iceberg Report is providing some great research-based ideas for applying TEL to courses and modules. You might also want to research your own quality standards at this level. Finally, don't forget the level of micro-assets, because each activity a student does, each video they watch, each paragraph they read, should also reflect quality. It's a useful exercise to consider what criteria you might develop to ensure that each asset is produced to a good, consistent standard. So there's a lot to consider when it comes to quality and tell, and by considering it from a micro, meso and macro point of view, you'll be able to address all quality matters. So do take an interest in all three levels. I hope the presentation has been helpful, and I do welcome any questions. Thank you so much, Mark, for this very interesting uh, presentation and the overview about the different levels, about micro, meso, and mac macro level. Um, are there any urgent uh, questions right now? Uh, in case we can take uh, one question, uh, otherwise we leave the questions uh, after all the presentations. So please, if you have a question, write in, in the chat. I can't see that anyone is uh, is uh, writing, so we continue and take the questions in the end. Thank you. So Mark also talked very much about that quality can be be looked at different kind of levels, and uh, so what's in it for me? 
And uh, he also mentioned uh, the report uh, from ICD, which I myself was the, the research leader for. And we looked at, um, I will also mention this report, uh, because um, it is uh, a report which was, is really up to date and it has a global perspective about quality in open online learning, including technology-enabled learning. And also about, uh, exactly about micro and meso and macro levels. So we have uh, written a lot about that. And what we did uh, was that we um, studied over 40 plus uh, quality mod models, um, as you see on OER, MOOCs, e-learning, online learning, TEL, uh, and those models were uh, representative from all over the globe, so from all, uh, more or less all continents. <coughs> and uh, what we did was also to discuss a lot, as I said, about micro, meso, and macro level for those quality uh, models. And as Mark was saying, uh, maybe most of the models are on macro and meso level, and not so much about uh, on the course level or the, the, small, the small models in the course, for example. But we also look very much about um, uh, norm-based or process-based uh, quality uh, enhancement, because that is also a, a huge difference. So from all those 40 models, we, uh, we did a quality matrix uh, what kind of uh, model were all those 40? Were it more, more like uh, benchmarking, as uh, Mark was mentioned? Is, was it more about accreditation? Was it more about um, uh, a guide uh, for or a framework? Or was it about uh, certification? And that is also uh, a huge difference. And one have to consider for what purpose are, are we discussing quality and what we will we do with it when we are going through the process? For example, if we are going through a process with benchmarking, it is very much about um, internal work and to make it, things visible within an institution. And also, if you benchmark with the other institutions, to get things on the table, so to say. But if you are going more for an accreditation, it is a nat uh, often a national or maybe even international body who are setting the criteria and uh, also the standards. So that's a, that is a huge difference. And it also is very much about how mature your institution is. <coughs> um, so we also discussed uh, quite a lot about uh, the stakeholders who have an interest in this. Because uh, as I said, and also Marcus pointed out, quality is in the eye of, it, of the beholder. So it depends on how, who is deciding what kind of criteria one are looking at, who are responding, and um, when. Is it immediately after a course, for example, or is it after one year, or is it maybe measuring how, how people are getting employed after, after courses? And then we also came up with a lot of um, recommendations. Maybe not a lot, but I think there were some 12 or 13 recommendations for different kind of stakeholders, how to, um, both for institutions, but also for organizations like ICD and also for quality assurance um, agencies. So the report is, as uh, also was mentioned, available uh, at ICD's webpage. And on my slides, I have a direct link as well. So you can just uh, take that link, and you can, can see what it is about. And the report is in three parts. Uh, the full report, uh, the summary for some six pages, if you don't like to read the whole report, and then the appendix where all the models are described. <coughs> so I would also like to argue that um, it is very helpful to look at both micro, micro level, meso level, and macro level. And of course, uh, different kind of stakeholders have different kind of interest uh, on what, which level they are, they are looking at. But I will argue that uh, all levels have to be considered because um, uh, the saying is um, quality is not as strong as the, the weakest link, I will say, is very true. Maybe you have very good strategies, for example. Maybe you have very good, uh, everything is in place at macro level. But then on micro level, for the learners, for the students, everything is a mess. So then you can't say, you can't measure that you have good quality. Um, so it is really important to have a look at all three levels. And it is really helpful, I will say, uh, if you also uh, divide it into this, because then you get a better overview. But it is, um, as Mark also was stressing, that you need to see how they are interrelated, or maybe where there is a gap. Because then you can start to work where there is a gap, 
or you can enhance where you have uh, your, your strengths. Um, more about the, this is written in the report, as I said, but also in the, the work by Kate Wood and Price from Commonwealth of Learning. And you also have the links uh, on these slides. So you can go directly and have a look. I mentioned that we also talked about um, uh, in the report about uh, norm-based versus process-based, and that is another way of look at, looking at it. At it. Is it more a norm-based uh, accreditation or a quality uh, enhancement? It is more about uh, an accreditation from an authority, often an authority from from above, so to say, national level, international level, sector-specific area, for example. Or is it more that you're that you looking for processes? Then it's more like a benchmarking, a self-evaluation. And I will really and strongly recommend, if you haven't gone to, to uh, none of the processes, start with the benchmarking and start with the self-evaluation, because then you can see where you are at. And there are several models where you can just uh, do, an, uh, for example, the e-excellence model. Um, you can do a self-evaluation. Uh, online. You can do it by yourself, you can do it with colleagues in the team, and then you can see where you are at and where you have to work further on. Certification is some, something more in, in between. It is often by um, associations uh, like um, uh, ICD, like uh, EADTU, for example, like sector-specific uh, organizations who are setting the, the criteria. So again, it is uh, very much uh, due to what you like to achieve and what shall you do your quality uh, quality work with with what you go how how you're going to use it and what will you do about it. Uh, then we of course have the stakeholders, and <clears throat> those maybe have a different kind of perspectives. We have those stakeholders are used to be mentioned: the learners, the academics, the faculty, institutional, region, national the country and uh, at the international level. So of course all those uh, stakeholders have different kind of perspectives and different kind of demands and needs when it comes to quality in TEL. And also as was mentioned both by myself but also by Mark that um, they also have interest in, in different levels. So that is why it is very wise to think about and to to go into uh, all levels meso uh, micro, meso, and, and macro. Because learners maybe have more interest in, in micro and meso, and at international and country level, maybe they have more interest about the macro level. So stakeholders need to be involved and need to have an uh, opinion about it. Uh, I will briefly mention um, some very good uh, references. This one by um, uh, Duval and Sharps and Sutherland, Technology Enhanced Learning, which came this year. Uh, the other one I have already mentioned, and that is from Commonwealth of Learning by Kate Wood and Price. I have also the links directly here on my site, if you would like to have a further look at it. I have some questions, uh, but I will save them till the end. <coughs> and here are my contact details. Um, so um, I would like to now uh, move on to uh, Irina's presentation. So um, welcome aboard, Irina. Hello, Eba. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. And if uh, not, and if the quality starts decreasing, then maybe I will switch off my camera to improve uh, the broadcast. Okay, thanks, Mark. So, uh, my uh, decision today is to talk about the quality enhancement of technology enhanced learning on micro and meso levels. And uh, my concern actually is the length. The links that uh, help to identify sometimes uh, quality criteria groups, sometimes the responsibilities within an organization who uh, should be discussing. Uh, of course, I understand that all stakeholders are discussing all three levels 
uh, macro, micro and uh, in the middle one, the meso level. But uh, it is useful to address all of them in detail. And uh, that is why uh, I will introduce to you uh, the micro and meso levels, but in the context of the links among all three of them. Uh, actually, we have been doing research uh, on uh, quality issues in the uh, professional community and also in Vidotas Magnus University. Uh, our first um, research uh, in the format of dissertations came out in 2008, but we continued. And um, currently, we feel the need to help organizations who want to uptake uh, technology-enhanced learning in broader uh, scope, in mainstreaming, to uh, help them to get oriented and to help them to prepare for uh, technology-enhanced learning services. So there was a good discussion going on between uh, or uh, among actually uh, several researchers who discussed what is a responsible and responsive integration of technology-enhanced learning within an organization. And uh, this is definitely the macro level, and uh, uh, I am not going to stop on that, but I will use it in the form of introduction. So the seven areas of organization activity have been identified that you can see in the very middle of the model which is strategy and management, IT infrastructure, tell curriculum and programs, staff continuous professional development, support systems, quality assurance and marketing and business. And these areas seem to be at a very uh, macro level. However, when we come to discuss them, we see clear links uh, with establishing the preconditions in the same way as preconditions are usually established within a country or a region in terms of uh, the policy of education, in terms of uh, infrastructure, internet, mobile applications, other things, tele demand. So the same way we see that the infrastructure uh, in the organization affects very clearly uh, micro and meso levels of quality as well. So uh, the colleagues that made introduction into the macro level uh, just confirmed that, I think. So if we go to the seven areas, the seven key areas of organization activity that you just saw on the slide in, in the previous uh, framework, I think might be the good start to discuss which of them uh, have direct links with the course level, that would be like meso level uh, from the reference in Mark slides, and which of them would go to micro or activity or a resource level. And uh, definitely we will find uh, several links uh, here and I will present them shortly in the slides that will follow. If we pick up only one um, activity area, which is quality assurance, and I think uh, universities have dedicated units, departments, who deal with quality assurance issues. Uh, it would be for both uh, traditional or online technology enhanced learning. Uh, one thing we all are obliged to do in Europe is to work following quality assurance standards and the network of quality assurance agencies usually are good reference bodies for that. So whenever we start discussing them, we are already um, uh, we already situate ourselves in the vertical dimension of quality issues, and we go deeper inside. So first of all, each um, organization that has education organization, which is education provider Intel, uh, actually needs to have uh, regulations on organization uh, of online studies or technology enhanced learning in the organization. So quality starts here. Uh, I, as an example, it could be like quality assurance group established that agrees upon the criteria for the meso level objects for the courses. Um, it could be also 
modules, as Mark suggested. Uh, therefore, uh, the group may, may wish to establish or to pick up existing uh, quality uh, criteria, quality grids, and uh, adapt them for the purpose of an organization. It might also be the case, uh, and uh, I personally go always uh, for, for this uh, uh, process of quality enhancement and process of quality assurances instead of assessment, to have the group that is organizing peer reviewing. And um, peer reviewing is helpful not, all, not only for the uh, teachers who are doing uh, peer reviewing and the uh, other uh, colleagues who are involved in this process, but actually peer reviewing, I would say, uh, following my experience, is one of the best instruments to develop community uh, in um, understanding uh, quality culture and developing quality culture within an organization. So actually, if you recall previous slides and if we have the activity of quality assurance as one of the key activities within an organization of education providers, we are already addressing, I would say, macro, but uh, very often also meso levels. Uh, I don't know how clearly you can see actually the scheme inside, but uh, it says that we have uh, always challenges in discussing quality assurance, especially that uh, when we start considering uh, subject matters, which uh, are sometimes too specific for uh, one or another area, area of learning or area of studies, then we have, of course, uh, uh, teaching and learning situations that occur during teaching and learning process. And uh, we, uh, those who are already experienced in TEL, we know that we probably uh, never prepare for them. We experience new situations every time. That is why when we speak about uh, technology enhanced learning curriculum designing and when we discuss the dimensions and criteria uh, quality dimensions and quality criteria we always think that we leave big percentage of unpreparedness uh, in front of us however what we may prepare for and what we should discuss is actually the consistency of learning strategy dimensions uh, um, so that learning outcomes or learning objectives are consistent with teaching and learning methods and then assessment strategies and learning assessment of learning achievements. Uh, then um, we should ensure experimental validity in, and creation of real-time context learning situations because we already uh, hear quite often that uh, theory and practice go apart. So we need actually to link this together. Uh, at the same time, uh, you see, uh, if you are able to see um, the, the further dimensions say that epistemological, cultural, philosophical, and psychological dimensions should be also uh, taken into consideration while considering quality assurance factors and uh, quality assurance criteria that we might wish to accept in our organizations. Metacognitive learning dimension, and uh, which actually goes as direct support for our learners. And uh, it's very nice that recently we have a lot of suggestions and ideas how different tools and virtual learning environments may support us in that, uh, for example, applying learning analytics. And of course, technological dimension, which leads to application of correct technologies in order to enhance learning instead of uh, bring obstacles for teacher and learner. We have different examples uh, of uh, criteria grids uh, that have been developed, that have been experimented and validated also with an Eden community. You have here the reference from one of lifelong learning projects, very practical one, for reviewing and reviving wet practices. Again, if you look at the title, it says that we usually are inclined to do our 
uh, peer review and self-assessment uh, applying this criteria so that we target at improvement and development of what is already available to better meet the needs of our learners. And uh, there are grids developed uh, that should be, uh, as far as I understand, should be based on uh, the dimensions, quality dimensions agreed. So whatever dimensions are chosen by an organization or researchers working within an organization, they should be very consistently described in terms of criteria and suggested in a very simple and clear way so that actually um, teachers who develop technology-enhanced learning curriculum could apply them. And uh, that is, I think, already common truth that if we develop sets of quality criteria in the format of grids or other formats, we can easily identify uh, the developments themselves. We may want to insert new criteria. We may want to initiate discussion on existing quality criteria. We may want to review them and be open towards uh, their development. Uh, yes, uh, learning uh, uh, objectives or competencies and learning outcomes in higher education and uh, that uh, presentation of theoretical material all these details matter a lot, actually. We have them, I think, on both micro and also meso level. Sometimes we uh, get annoyed or dissatisfied with uh, some of the uh, characteristics that we identify in the course. We might think this is a micro, micro level. However, these criteria described on a meso level, on the course level, will help us to prepare better for these smaller uh, pieces and fragments that we should identify now as micro level. So actually, the examples that I am showing to you right now, you may found at uh, the website. Uh, you see the reference here. And uh, they are adaptable, they are editable, they are published under uh, Creative Commons licenses for uh, non-commercial share alike um, uh, and attribution license and they already are widespread in different projects in in Eden projects and other projects all over Europe they um, actually enhance peer reviewing among institutions and teachers for quality enhancement and whenever we start cooperation with other organizations we, we want to compare uh, quality criteria for meso levels, we want also to we may want to compare also criteria for uh, micro levels and uh, to see how uh, they are integrated into our common understanding on quality culture and how we may prepare to be more open and uh, organize peer reviewing between and among education organizations. So different different didactical methodologies have been analyzed and uh, research has been done until uh, we came up uh, with the selection of quality criteria. However, uh, on micro level, we are always prepared if uh, we are detailed enough in uh, meso uh, level quality criteria. And then when we have activities, we may also find that consistency is in there. And we, when we present quality criteria for activity or assignment description, or when we introduce quality criteria to teachers on how to design uh, learning uh, objects and learning resources and open educational resources, then we definitely uh, continue uh, developing uh, also uh, quality and enhancing quality on meso level. So uh, this is uh, the link that I wanted to demonstrate to you between micro and uh, meso level. Uh, also, I wanted to share with you information that quality criteria, the sets of quality criteria exist. Also, uh, quality is discussed in terms of criteria, but also in terms of factors that might affect uh, quality in teaching and learning. 
uh, different methodological examples exist but again one of the key messages is that actually we design curriculum for technology enhanced learning but then when we teach uh, especially in technology enhanced learning environments we experience unexpected situations and i think it is always also one um, of the important area to be discussed uh, quality assurance uh, criteria for teaching in TEL, not only designing uh, in, for TEL. And of course, if we have uh, initiatives, different initiatives in Europe, we need to adapt, uh, we need to sit down and discuss if we may apply uh, quality criteria, quality uh, factors uh, to new phenomena equally well and i think not each in innovation each um, uh, phenomenon should be reviewed in terms of scenarios that it goes uh, through now i'm showing to you an example for example uh, of virtual mobility quality handbook which would be different if we have different scenarios for teachers students bilateral multilateral and uh, for the scenarios of implementation of virtual mobility so now i see that we are coming already short of time so apologies for taking one or more maybe minutes um, longer than expected but i complete here and give the floor back to you eva uh, so thank you so much um, arena for your very interesting presentation also uh, yes, yes, we are a bit um, short of time, uh, but um, I will uh, still invite uh, questions because we have some minutes uh, left. Maybe in overall, do you think it is helpful to uh, to have this uh, distinction between uh, meso? Um, micro and macro level and to see the links and the, to, uh, to see the gaps. Can it be helpful when we discuss uh, quality as uh, we have uh, all the three of us um, pointed out that quality is such a complex um, uh, concept as well as tell is a rather complex uh, concept. I see that Eleonora and Irina are typing. I'd, I'd like to respond to that question, Eber. Uh, I think all three are very, very important. Uh, I like the way that um, Irina just demonstrated how all three can be combined together into one overall quality approach. I think the point was made several times that uh, different stakeholders have different expectations of quality. And considering all three levels, I think you do get the, the broadest possible view as to how our quality is working within the organization. Yes, um, yes, uh, I will also very much agree on that because uh, different uh, stakeholders have different kind of uh, kind of um, approach to quality and also approach to, to different kind of, uh, of levels. So that is the other dimension which comes in. I'm trying to see what uh, Eden is saying. It should be really interesting. Uh, thank you, Eleonora, for your feedback. You are asking about MOOCs. Um, for example, for MOOCs, uh, there are um, EADTU, uh, the European Association for Distant Teaching University, have come out with a very nice um, um, both self-evaluation but also benchmarking uh, model for, for MOOCs. And that, um, that is the only one, uh, at least in Europe, um, which is available now. And I think you can have a quick look at that and to see what it is about. They have, um, I think there are seven features which, which they are looking at. And that is, uh, gives a an, uh, an, um, helpful overview how you can look at MOOCs, for example, in your case. Uh, 
Um, well, I think um, all of us are sitting with a lot of questions maybe after, uh, after this webinar and there's a lot more to discuss. Uh, we will continue uh, with a special interest group of, um, uh, of talent quality enhancement in different ways. We have our web page. Uh, we will see if we can maybe uh, have some kind of activities uh, to that, maybe like um, blog posts or whatever. We can all, we have also more webinars. We have uh, the next webinar, the 7th of um, December. And at that webinar, we will more discuss, uh, I think you, you came into that uh, discussion also, Arena. There are new things coming up all the time, and we need to measure quality at the current state of the art, so to say. We can't measure quality with old models. So we, we need to have some kind of agile uh, method to do that. And then we also have a tweet chat uh, the 13th of uh, December. And um, we in the core group, uh, we invite uh, more uh, people, more colleagues to be involved in this area because it is uh, really uh, an important area at universities and educational, uh, educational uh, organizations. And together we can, uh, can do a lot, I think. So I'm sure we will continue in um, spring as well. With um, I see saw some suggestions about more that maybe some teachers or academics can uh, see how they are looking at quality in their particular course and to give more concrete examples. Because I think for today it was more like an overview how to approach uh, quality enabled uh, learning in Intel. Uh, I see so Renata is coming in as well. Um, so uh, for all of you who have, who have registered, uh, the link for this webinar will be available and sent to you. And you will also get a um, badge for your participation. And the link will also be provided to the web page, for the Eden web page. So by that, I will uh, thank you very much, all of you, uh, all of you who had participated, all of you who had contributed, and of course, very much to, to Mark and to Irina, who has also contributed, and to Eden, who have helped a lot with the dissemination of this webinar and the technical aspects. Uh, thanks a lot. So uh, have a nice afternoon.